Welcome to Passion Church. For more information about Passion Church, please visit us online at www.passionchurch.tv. Now let's join the service already in progress. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Doing well, doing well. Well, today I'm here uh, in place of Pastor Steve. He is on quarantine right now, so if you guys would continue to lift him up in prayer. He's, he's at the house by himself, and uh, I know, if you know Pastor Steve, he does not do well sitting still, and so especially by himself, so just lift him up. We're, we are praying for him. He's feeling a lot better. He's coming off quarantine this week, and so um, we're thankful that, that he will be back with us soon. And I'm also thankful that he planned ahead and uh, he sent me his notes in advance. He's been doing this on a regular basis just in case there was ever a time where we needed to, you know, enact this move to where, I, to where I would need to step in for him if he had to be quarantined through any circumstance. And so thankfully we planned ahead and uh, he gave me his notes. And so today you get me. I, I've been, I've been, I just came off of quarantine. So you could say that I may have a little bit of, a little bit of energy um, so I'm hoping that I'm in a, in a room with people who came expecting to encounter God this morning. Of course, you could look at it on the other side. I was also quarantined with two, two children under the age of four. Uh, and so you can say, maybe I'm rested. Maybe this is my respite from, from that. But I'm excited to be here. And we've been in a series called Bust a Move and at the first of the year, we like talking about spiritual growth. We, we, we like talking about uh, uh, capitalizing on this new season. You know, there's a wave of energy that happens at the beginning of the year where we, we, we like to make New Year's resolutions, maybe about health or, or, or how we use our money or maybe how, how you work at your job, just different things in our lives. We like to set goals and, and, and we could summarize or characterize these goals, these things we want to accomplish as movement moving closer, moving further, moving deeper. And, and the thing about movement is it, it's actually defined as a series of organized activities working toward an objective. So we start by saying we needed to move over the first week. And then last week, Pastor Steve talked about where he challenged us to move on because we can't move on to what's next if we're stuck, if we're hung up on a previous issue, if we're hung up on something that happened in our past. But he's, he called us to move, move on. And movement is, is essential if we're going to reach our goal, if we're going to reach our objective, if we're going to become more like Jesus, we have to move. If we want to grow in maturity, we have to move. We can't just be Passive. If we want to fulfill his purpose in our life, we have to move. And this leads me to the challenge that we have today. And the challenge that I think no matter what stage of life we are in, is a challenge that we all struggle with. And that's moving now. We have to move now. I can always tell when someone isn't going to stick to their um, their New Year's resolution, if they're talking to me about it in December, talking to me about it in November, it's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, when in January 1st, I'm going to start doing this. January 1st, I'm going to start eating better. January 1st, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get my life. January 1st, I'm going to start spending my money better. It's like, hey, man, why not now? I can always tell when they're like, okay, I'm going to come talk to you in the middle of January. You're going to already stop. Because if you're not willing to start now, if you're not willing to start preparing now, doing the things that you need to do now, then I can almost guarantee that you're not going to stick with it when it comes to January. But, oh, man, but let me just have two more weeks where I can eat cupcakes. Right? Let me have two more weeks where, where I, can, I, can, I can go to the mall. And, and these the shoes, they're going to be on sale Oh, Chris, you know, let me, let me, let me, let me have this time and then I'm, I'm going to get it together. But I want to challenge you. We need to move now because if we don't move now, we'll wake up a year from now and we're making the same resolutions, trying to achieve the same goals in the same place that we were and we're no closer, but we may indeed even be farther away. 
And as we get older, we say things and we try to make ourselves feel better about it. Like, man, these years just keep going faster and faster. <laughs> right? Where, where does the time go? Right? Man, I, I feel like it was just, I feel like it was just March. I, I, like time is going so fast. Like I'm so busy, all these things. But really, it's not that time is moving faster. The issue is that we've become professional procrastinators, especially in our spiritual walk. We, 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 we say like, oh man, I didn't know it's been this long since I opened up my Bible. Or, 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 or maybe we find ourselves struggling with something and then we beat ourselves up because like, when's the last time that I actually pressed in and drew near to God? It's, I feel like it's been a week, but really it's been three or four months because we put it off, we procrastinate. And there's a lot of scriptural illustrations of moving on that, that we could point you to, but we're gonna read one and we're gonna mention some others in passing. And, and so if you have your notes, if you have it, just get ready, open up your Bibles to Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18, and this is an account that's in um, a, a couple different gospels and we're gonna read from Luke chapter 18 um, starting in verse 35, amen? So starting in verse 35, as Jesus and his followers arrived at Jericho, a blind beggar was sitting by the roadside. When he heard the crowd approaching, he asked, what is all this commotion about? It's Jesus, they said. Jesus, the Nazarene, is passing by. The blind beggar shouted, Jesus, son of David, have pity and show me mercy. Those in front of the crowd scolded him and warned him to be quiet. But the blind beggar screamed even louder. Jesus, son of David, show me mercy. Suddenly Jesus stopped and directed those nearby, bring the man over to me. When they, thought, when they, when they brought him before Jesus, he asked the man, what do you want me to do for you? Master, he said, please, I want to see. Jesus said, now you will see. Receive your sight this moment, for your faith in me has given you sight and new life. Instantly, he could see again. His eyes popped open, and he saw Jesus standing in front of him. He shouted loud praises to God, and he followed Jesus. And when the crowd saw what happened, they too erupted with shouts of praise to God. Now, if you go and read this same account in Mark chapter 10, it talks about Jesus arriving in Jericho, but instead of him meeting this man on the way into Jericho, it, Mark says that he meets this man on the way out of Jericho. Now, I'm not the smartest man in the room. I've, obviously, I wasn't there at this account, so it could be one of those situations where they had this conversation. Like, no, man, I remember it, it was on the way out of Jericho. No, 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 it was on the way in Jericho, and, and I don't know, but it was this same account, and the same things were happening. But it makes me think. Mark says that it's later as, Jer as Jesus is leaving, and, and we can't prove that Jesus entered and left Jericho at the same time place, but it's assumed because Jericho used to be what? A fortified city. So there's really only one way in, one way out, right? You guys remember Jericho. Joshua in the battle of Jericho. You know, so if we assume that Jesus came and left the same way, it makes me think that the blind man made a move to get in the path of where he knew Jesus would be. Like, we can't prove it, but think about it. And he receives his sight because he's willing to make that move. But if, 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 if let's just go back and just say that he was already there just by chance. He had to make another move, the move being that he was not going to fall victim to what everyone else was trying to get him to do. He was going to make the move to actually open up his mouth and let out a cry above the crowd. Because I don't know if you've ever been around a crowd. It's not like when you're in a crowd of people. It's crickets, right? You guys ever been in a crowd? You've been to an airport. You've been to a, a basketball game. It's, not it's, it's never quiet there. 
And so you can imagine that if, if he was going to speak up to where Jesus could hear him, he was like, you know what, I'm going to yell and I'm going to yell now. And not only did he have to decide that he was going to yell now, he decided, like, I'm going to yell even when they tell me to shut up. So he made that decision that I'm going to move now. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to act now. And it was his willingness to move at that moment when Jesus was in hearing range, when Jesus was close. And that is really important for us to understand. Because if he would have waited even for a moment in the noise of the crowd, if Jesus takes a few more steps, is Jesus close enough to hear him yell? Is Jesus close enough to to hear? Because I could assume that there were probably a lot of people talking to Jesus. But he made the move. And he made the move now. He didn't wait a minute. He didn't wait an hour. He didn't wait. I'm going to wait and see if Jesus comes up and actually talks to me. Isn't that what we do? We see something and we see God's promise right there. Like God has called us to do things. It's like, I'm going to wait. If God wants it to happen, it's going to happen. Have you ever said that? I've said that. God, if you want this to happen, it's going to happen. All right. And then we just sit back and wait. But that's not what this blind man did. He's like, okay, Jesus is here. I've heard that he heals. And so he's close enough to me right now. I'm going to make it happen. I'm not going to wait for him to come to me. I'm not going to wait for him, for him to, 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 to come and ask me, hey, bro, do you want to be healed or do you want to just sit here forever? He's like, no, I want my blessing. I want my healing now. And I want you to know, is there anybody in the room this morning that came and wanting to encounter God say, you know what? I'm not just going to sit here and wait, but I want what God has for me and I want it right now. Makes me think of that J.G. Wentworth commercial. <laughs> Open it. It's my money and I want it now, right? <laughs> what are we missing because we're unwilling to move now? Let me submit this to you. Sometimes, sometimes your next move may be to wait. But a lot of times we think of wait and we think about waiting in the wrong way. A lot of times we'll have a season where we feel like God isn't moving like we want. He's not as evident in our lives. He hasn't done what we want when we want it to happen, and so we get bored. And so instead of waiting, sometimes we move when we're not supposed to move. Now hear me, let me think, let me see if this blind man knew Jesus would come back and walk through and he positions himself for Jesus. What if, what if Jesus took an extra long time? Because I don't know how long Jesus was in Jericho. What if he thought, hey, all right, Jesus will come back later today, right? Okay, because I got, I got places to be. I got to go. I got to go sit by this pool. I know I got to go sit by this place because I know when they come out, they have extra food. They have extra. I need to go make sure I get there, get a good spot there. What? So Jesus has to come in the next couple of hours or I'm going to leave. Right? We want Jesus to move and we want him to move when we want him to move. But when we're waiting, sometimes we get fidgety. We think, all right, God's not going to do it, so I'm going to move churches. God's not, I'm not making any progress here at this job, so I'm just going to get a new job. This circle, I don't really like this circle. They don't really talk about the things I like. You know, they don't really ask me any questions about how I'm actually doing, so I'm just going to find a new circle. Get some new friends. This isn't working for me, so I'm just going to do something else. Been waiting too long. But that's the wrong kind of waiting. Sometimes God is asking us to wait because he's preparing us. He's preparing our hearts. And when when we are passively waiting, that's the waiting that, you know, we're on the couch. It's like chilling. If anything happens, maybe it'll happen. But if we're actively waiting, 
How many of you guys ever order something on Amazon? Order something, and you know, you, you, have the, you have the notifications. It's like, okay, it's shipped. Yes, my order has shipped. It's coming in the next couple of days, right? And then you see it's out for delivery, right? We're waiting, but we're not passively waiting. He's like, okay, oh man, I'm not gonna be home. Let me call my neighbor. He's like, hey, neighbor, the Amazon truck's coming today. Can you make sure you get my package? Like we're waiting, but we're not passively waiting. We're actively waiting. We're actually not sitting still, but we're waiting on, on the package. We're waiting on what is coming, and we're not just, not just, it'll get here when it gets here. But if it's something that we're seeking, it's some, if it's something we desire, then we are looking for it. We are anxiously like, okay, if it shows up today, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unlock the door. I see the truck. I'm going to unlock the door. I'm going to open. I'm going to be standing right there when he comes up to the doorstep. I'm going to be like, oh, yeah. It's okay. Yeah, you can just drop it right here. I won't open the door. You can drop it. And then as soon as he drops it, oh, yeah, I got, you know. We are actively waiting. And I want to think that maybe this blind man was sitting there and he knew that Jesus would be there. And so he was listening. Hey, what's that noise? What's all that? What's happening? Is this what I think it is? It's like, yeah, it's Jesus. He's walking by. He's like, okay, this is what I've been waiting for. This is what I've been waiting for. This is what I've been expecting. So it's time for me to move, and it's time for me to move now. He was actively waiting. If he was passively waiting, he may have missed it. What are we missing because we've become so comfortable so passive with our situation that we're just willing to wait and we're just willing to settle. Me and my wife, we just got a new mattress topper for our bed. And, you know, it's like memory foam, gel infused. It's nice, you know, but the longer you lay in it, the longer you sit on it, it like settles a little bit better. And it makes it harder to get out. <laughs> right? You're just in there like, oh, this is so good. Then it's like, mm, oh. Let me, let me get out of here. Like, it's harder to, you know, you're like, you're like settling in. And a lot of times we settle in where we are. And so when it comes time for us to move and what's come time for us to move now, we, uh, oh, it's not that bad right now. I mean, I've been, I've been blind my whole life, so what's another day? But what if we miss something? If we're actively waiting, because God is actively waiting on us. He says, seek me and you will find. Draw near to me and I will draw near to you. If you knock, I will open. I just imagine that God is just waiting on the other side of the door, like we're waiting on our Amazon package. And he's just waiting. Come on, just knock. Just knock. Why aren't they knocking? Just knock. Just move now. I I'm here. I'm waiting. I'm here now. So why are you waiting? Why, why won't you just act now? Why won't you cry out now? Why won't you pray and ask me now? Why won't you sing and worship now? Why won't you move now? Because if we don't move now, then our desperation may expire. You know, I, my, I recently started trying to eat better. And so I've been buying more kale. Now, I, I, don't, have, I don't hate kale. I like, I like putting kale in my salad. Now, there's some people that like drink it and all that stuff. I was like, I can't do that. That's bad. I'd rather just drink straight water with some dirt in it before I drink. <laughs> but I'll put it in a salad, right? But we, but we just recently bought some kale. And, you know, you get that initial like, oh, yeah, I'm going to eat good. Right? But then you're like, you know, I'm not going to make a salad right now because these burgers look good. <laughs> so we, we, we hesitate like, oh, uh, but the burgers but we don't move and we don't eat it then. We don't, we don't make that decision right now and we make another decision. We substitute what is good for something that is bad. And then we find ourselves, which is where we were, 
Yesterday, I opened up the refrigerator. Oh, what does that smell? It smells like bad dirt. It was my kale. It had went bad. It had expired. I was like, what's, what's, that is so bad. But I didn't move when I was desperate. I didn't move when, I, when it was fresh. I didn't move when it was all on my mind and I was in the position and I was ready. You know, because you went and you go by like, I'm going to eat good. I'm going to be healthy. I'm going to feel nice. But I didn't move right then. And then I missed out. And I never opened up the vegetable drawer again. And so there's three things that we need to know. There's three things we need to know right now. Delay destroys our desperation. Spiritual hesitation destroys our spiritual hunger. Because there is a de an expiration date on our desperation, because of the focus of the new year, because of all of these things, we, 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 try to, uh, we try to make all these moves at the beginning of the year because it's like it's a new year. I have this energy. I have this desperation. I want to make things right. I'm dissatisfied with how last year went, so I want to make sure that this year is different, right? I want to make sure 2022 is different. But if we don't move in that moment and make the decision when we're desperate, when we're ready, when we're excited, if we don't make that move then, then we may not ever make the move. If we wait too long to make the move, we'll naturally fill the void with something else. We allow cheap substitutes to distract or even dull our desperation until we just sit here and we settle. We settle into our couch, settle into our comfortable life, not willing to move. We have a tendency to slip back into patterns, to mediocrity, the things that we become comfortable with. But we have to move now. We have to move right now. We have to allow our desperation to grow rather than allowing it to be drowned out. I've been in services like this where people would challenge us to move now. And, I, I, and, and I've, had, I've even had moments to where they would say, you know, you need to call. If you have something you're struggling with, you have someone you need to make things right with, you need to call and text them right now. And I'll, I'll be sitting there and I was like, yeah, I need to call. I need to text my accountability partner right now and tell them what I'm going through. But then I'm like, I, I like, uh. What if he's busy? Well, he, he, may not, he may not answer right now. So I'll, I'll wait and I'll call him when I get home. So I hesitate. I delay. And then by the time I get home, you know what happens? It's fine. I can, I can do this on my own. I can make it through this on my own. And I never, I never call. I never text. I delayed and it destroyed my desperation. The next thing I want to say is our delay is deadly. What if the disciples, when they were on the boat in the storm by themselves and then they see Jesus walking? They see Jesus walking by the boat on the water and they're like, what if they didn't cry out? What if they delayed? Because their boat was about to sink and then they saw Jesus and it says in the scripture that Jesus was going to walk on by. Jesus was ready to just pass them by. He was waiting like, hey, I'm here, but they're going to have to call out to me. They're going to have to cry out to me because God knows, Jesus knows that we need to get involved. What if, what if the woman with the issue of blood hadn't pushed through the crowd and touched Jesus even when it was socially unacceptable for her to push through the crowd, to even be around the crowd and to even touch someone, let alone Jesus? What if she wouldn't have done it? What if she would have hesitated? Then she would have been stuck with that sickness. She would have died with this sickness. What if the four men carrying the paralyzed man, 
decided to wait for the crowd to go away? What if Peter would have hesitated when Jesus said, take a step out of the boat? Come on, take a step out of the boat right now. What if he was like, you know what, no, not today. And then he went back out later. It's like, you know, I'm going to try it now. He probably and went straight to the bottom because he would have. We have to move now because our delay can cause deadly. It could have dire circumstances. If we delay, we'll allow ourselves to become settled. We'll settle for later. We'll even settle for never. We'll settle for temporary comfort rather than a life of living out the promises of God. Moving on our dream now, moving on our education now, moving on our budget now, moving on our relationships now, moving on breaking our addiction now, moving on taking our steps towards Christ right now. We, there's no reason to wait. We just sang this song, God has walked into the room. When you walk into the room, everything changes. If we really believe that, then when God shows up, when we come into a place where we can sense the presence of God, why are we waiting It's like, oh, no, I, I, can, I, can go down, I, can, I can go down to the altar when I get home. You know, I got, I, got a, I got a prayer closet. I can do that when I get home. Yes, you can, and I encourage you to. But why not now? Why not now? It's been said that the devil is in the details. But what we would say is, the devil is in delay. He can convince us to put off our desperation. He can put off to put us put off our chase. The pursuit of Jesus and his will for our lives. If he can if he can get us to put it off to delay. Then there's a good chance that he'll be able to, de to defeat us and we'll never start chasing. It happens in our spiritual life. It happens in our practical life, if we don't do the things that we want to do now, then there's a chance that we'll never do it. We'll meet back in here on the third Sunday of 2023, and we'll be in the same place. We may even end up in the promised land, but you know, they could have got to the promised land 40 years sooner, but they delayed. The next point I want to talk to is our des desperation is disruptive to those who are satisfied, safe, or stuck. Think about the account. The blind beggar, he was there in Jericho and he was crying out and those that were with Jesus, those that were following him were trying to shut him up. It's like, hey man, don't stop. Don't yell. Don't cry out right now. What are you thinking? I'll tell you what he was thinking. He was desperate. He was desperate and he knew that he needed to move now. Because if we're satisfied, if we're safe, when someone starts yelling, when someone starts chasing, we're like, bro, man, you're doing too much. Right? I know for me, it was like that. I, I would be at, at practice in, when I was in high school. I'd be at practice, and, you know, we, we're out there doing stuff. And, you know, I, I was bigger than everybody else. Right? I was taller. I was... I did not have the work ethic that I needed to seize all of my talents and all the things that were in front of me. So I'd be in practice in some days, I wouldn't work as hard. And then I would see somebody else beside me, they're like working hard, all this stuff, and like, I say, man, bro, slow down. Why are you playing so hard? And then when the time came to go get a water break, I'd be like, oh, I'm gonna get a water. And then this dude like running over the water, like, hey man, we're just getting a water break, what are you doing? Man, you're making this all look bad, right? It was annoying to me, but he was desperate. He wanted, he wanted to get everything out of his life that he had. But when we're comfortable, when we think we got it under control, 
We try to stop those that are chasing. Try to stop those that are trying to get everything. If we're satisfied, if we're stuck, if we think that God only moves and we want him to move the way we want him to, God, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna sit in my seat. I'm gonna raise my hand on the third song. And then I'm gonna put my hands back down. I'm gonna sit, I'm gonna listen. I'm gonna fill in the blanks. I'm gonna go home. God, move. This is what I'm gonna do, but you move in between what I wanna do. But if you come in here and you're desperate, and you'll come like, God, before they even play the first note, I'm gonna seek after you. Before they even, before, before, before the, the worship team even starts singing, I'm gonna be chasing because I'm desperate for you because when I walk in here and I'm surrounded by a, a group of believers and I can sense your presence, when I wake up in the morning and you give me breath, you give me life and I'm able to open up my eyes, I'm able to stand on my feet, I'm able to, 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 to worship you. I'm gonna give you everything because you're the reason that I'm here. It says in the Bible that Jesus was telling his disciples, I didn't come for those who are well. I didn't come for the healthy. I came for those who are sick. And I wanna just say that we may think that we are well and we may think that we're comfortable, but Lord, help me. Help me not ever get to the place where I think that I got it all under control. God, help me get to the place where I think that I'm safe. Help me get to the place where I, where I know that I will never be well without you. God, help me never get to the place where I, I feel like I'm strong enough on my own and I, and I lose my desperation. Because if we're honest with ourselves, then we're, we are all broken. Help me realize that I'm broken. Help me realize that, I, that, that without you, God, I will never be enough. because he came for the broken, he came for the lost. And I don't wanna to try to fit in with the ones who aren't desperate. I don't wanna to try to fit in with the ones who are pretending to have it all together. I don't wanna say, you know what, yeah, I, maybe I should be quiet. They seem to have it all worked out, so I'm gonna be quiet too. And maybe that's how it works out. I don't wanna fit in. I wanna cry out. What's that old song It says, I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. Bless me now, my Savior. Bless me now, my Savior. Bless me now, my Savior. God, I need you. Bless me now. I came in here. I didn't come here to get a blessing next week. I didn't come here to get a breakthrough next week. I came here to encounter you right now. Are you willing to lose your opportunity so you'll make everybody else feel comfortable? Because You'll make some people uncomfortable when you cry out. You'll make some people uncomfortable when you chase him with all of your heart. You'll make your family uncomfortable when you chase him with all of your heart, when you can't stop talking about the goodness of God. People won't like it, but you need to get to Jesus anyway. Come on, we need some people who are gonna, who are gonna plead, who are gonna cry out until Jesus stops and says, you know what, bring them here. Come on, is there any, am, am I at Passion Church this morning or I'm at Passion Church this morning? Because I, 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 I hope that I'm not in a room that's full of people who are here passively waiting, expecting God to just drop blessings when we're sitting still, expecting God to just drop blessings when we aren't, when we aren't crying out, expecting God, he's not gonna draw near to you if you aren't drawing near to him. So I just need some people who are passionate this morning to make some noise and say, you know what, I came for my blessing now. Because you look at the end, look at the last thing that we read. After the blind man received his sight, he opened up his eyes. It says his eyes popped open and he saw Jesus and he began to worship and it doesn't stop there. He wasn't the only one that ended up worshiping. 
The same people that tried to shut him up, the same people that tried, that were getting uncomfortable, started praising God. So, oh man, I, I, I want to make sure that I stay comfortable. I got to stay inside my lane. I got to stay inside my, I don't want to do anything that's weird. But maybe God is calling you to be weird because the person next to you needs to get uncomfortable. Maybe God is calling you to cry out because the person next to you needs to see somebody have breakthrough because they need breakthrough in their life, but they're so comfortable. They settled. Cry out now. Your move has the potential to start a chain reaction. I know what you went through was hard. I know what you're struggling with may be hard. And you may have been struggling with this for years and years. But I want to tell you that right now, Jesus, Jesus has walked into the room. He's walked into the room. He's walking by right now. And, and his question is, are you going to let me just pass by? Or are you going to cry out? Come on, I need some people who are ready to cry out to God to just stand up in the building. I need some people that are ready, that are desperate this morning to right there sitting in front of your computer watching this on your TV to just stand up right where you are and just cry out in desperation. Come on, if you came here and you need him and you know that you need him, every he is in the room. Can we just praise God just for a second? Can we make some people uncomfortable just for a second? Because I believe that God has some breakthrough, has some chains that he needs to break right now, but we need to make sure that we we get out of the way and we move now. Come on, so we're gonna see. And if you have God, if you have something you need to move, I wanna encourage you to take the next step. I want you to come down, move now, come down front. And just right now, just begin to just lay it all out. Just right now, lay it all out and just begin to ask God. Because God, I came, I'm crying out for you. I'm stepping out of my seat. I'm stepping out of my comfort zone. I'm coming forward, I wanna get close to you because I don't wanna miss, I don't wanna miss your promise. I don't want to miss, I don't want to miss my desperation. I'm desperate for you now. I want to be desperate for you now. I want to be desperate for you tonight. I want to be desperate for you tomorrow. I want to be desperate for you every day of the week. God, I need you. I need you. We want you. Father, make us uncomfortable. 
God, make us uncomfortable. Make us antsy. Make it to where we can no longer sit still. God, allow our desperation to just overflow where we can't hold it in any longer. Father, I thank you. God, I pray that this is not something that just happens now, but it's something that goes with us to where we sense your presence, where we sense you asking us to do something, asking us to pray over someone, asking us to go and, and, and talk to and share Jesus with someone. We may not even know who they are, but we, we will be able to move now. So, oh man, they don't know, they won't know me. It's gonna be uncomfortable. I don't, yes, it's gonna be uncomfortable. Because when we experience change, if we want to be changed, we're going to have to do some things that are uncomfortable. So God, I just pray you make us uncomfortable. To where we would we'll no longer be able to settle. We'll no longer be able to be settled. But we'll know that God, you have more. And so I need to move now. I need to move now to chase after you. I need to move now. like okay let's go home all right okay let's let's just go back to normal life but what if Jesus was like saying you know what hey hey I'm still here hey I'm, I'm still wanting to move there's still some people in the room that need to cry out there's still some people that that need to get a little bit more uncomfortable I think that even right now God may be speaking to some of you some of you in this room to reach out and, and, and maybe go talk to somebody that's sitting in your row. Maybe he, maybe you need to go talk to somebody that's that's maybe uh, across the across the room. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for who you are. Thank you for showing up in this room. And God, may we never become passive. But may we come into this place, may we live our lives daily, ready to encounter you, ready to chase after you, ready to engage our community so where, to where we can point them to a God who will heal, a God who will set free. A God who delivers in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's been a privilege to have you join us for this time of ministry. To find more Passion Church resources or to make a donation online, visit www.passionchurch.tv. Remember, you can't live without passion. <laughs>